Mays had a touch of Napoleon in him and wasn't easy on Bless for crushing on me, and neither was she easy on him, so they were better off keeping a distance. And yet they were alike in a way. They both lived for the moment, presence without pretense, nothing apocryphal or should I say contrived, a wonderful quality that attracted me to both of them. If you had to persuade me to convince me, you may have lost me in the persuasion, unless you were a magnificent speaker like Winston Churchill or Martin Luther King Jr., which nobody is any more. Maze, he skipped all that persuasive stuff and got straight to convincing. I might be looking in the mirror, adjusting an eyelid that had gone haphazard, when suddenly his lips were on my hips, just above my belt and he would blow some of that hot air of his into my side, causing me to twist and curve around, only to find he had a finger in my belt loop and pulled me to him without trying. And that was the best, when love was effortless. Yet for love to be effortless required so much hard work. If we seriously started arguing, we could get into trouble, because then Napoleon might come out and I was obstinate in my own way. So this is where I had to be painstaking in my efforts to diffuse it. I might counter a statement he made with an invitation like, oh yeah, make me then. Just to open up some space, you know, outside of the contention. He knew I was quick with a turn of a mood or a phrase, and he caught on all right. But whether or not we stopped fighting was a different story. If I couldn't diffuse it with words, there was always the physical. If I dropped a shoulder or arched my back, or even allowed the faintest devious smile, I would be a goner, I mean, he would take me, because no one else could do that to him. It was my signature. And a man loves when you do the little things no one else can do. And I just won his heart once more.